The Life and Times of Charlie Diaper, a quick synopsis by Robert P. Fitton. In most of the Matthias Jones books, the Mafia kingpin in Boston is Albert Fiore. Even tough guy Coco Stefani bends to the will of Albert Fiore. Of course, there is a backstory, and it's a good one. During a springtime baseball game at Hamilton College, a powerful Mustang with Connecticut plates circles Larson Stadium. This Mustang holds the key to power for one Albert Fiore, the most powerful mafia don in New England. Jones, trying to coach the baseball game, is hounded by Lark Larson, a man whose birthday is April Fool's Day. Need I say any more? Well, I will anyway. Lark will soon be married to his longtime girlfriend, Flo Nightingale. Incredibly, as Lark almost hits the Mustang with his huge bomber of a car, the Mustang explodes, killing the inhabitants, stopping the game, and sending Jones into looking for answers. The car is from Avondale, Connecticut, and owned by a Marjorie Reed, but driven by the deceased man, Jonathan Miller of Avondale. Enter beer-guzzling Billy Bobcat, whom Coco calls Bumcat on the way to Fenway Park in Boston. Something is wrong with Coco at Fenway Park, and he doesn't want to talk about it. Somehow Arnie and Bucky are at the game annoying Coco and spilling beer on a Red Sox star. Coco is confronted by Albert Fiore and two thugs in the restroom. Fiore says he's not going to go down because of something called the log book. The grand jury and Charlie DePiro, former kingpin in Boston. A fight breaks out and Jones rushes in. Fiore himself is injured and Coco tells Jones that Charlie is in one of those old age places for dementia. Boss wasn't an angel, but he wasn't in the loop about the logbook. Coco knows the entire story about the logbook. Can't let the boss down. Charlie was gone and Albert Fiore took over. Coco never let the boss down and didn't tell anyone where the boss was located. In this book, P.J. Fletcher, Hamilton's cousin from Chicago, meets Jones for the first time. Billy Bobcat wants the logbook story, and Albert Fiore travels to Hamilton to pressure Jones about Coco's whereabouts. He calls Charlie DePiro, Charlie Diaper, and then he returns again to one of Jones's ball games. Jones soon realizes that something is wrong with the Charlie DePiro story. Jones learns that Miller was a good kid, worked at a construction company in Connecticut, and just took a few days off, and now he's dead. The Lark Flow wedding is a complete disaster, with Fiore and his boys looking on. Fiore was manipulating Channel Z's video to scan people about sporting contests. Everything was kept in a logbook. Then Jones learns that conventional pharmaceuticals can mimic dementia. Jones goes to Connecticut to find the details, and maybe Charlie Diaper. Dulio is with him, which adds to the action. Franny is kidnapped back in Boston by Fiore's people, which sends Jones over the edge. Enter Charlie's son, Joey, in a final showdown with Fiore. Somebody wins and somebody loses for control of the New England underworld. The epilogue scene with P.J. Fletcher in L.G. Bentley's office is a twister, and the legacy of Hamilton Fletcher lives on in Hamilton, New Hampshire.